Hey everyone, my name is Jedediah Kim. I'm one of the pastors at Pine Lake Covenant Church. Thanks so much for joining us for online worship this Sunday. This Sunday is a special Sunday. It's Pastor Mark Meredith's last Sunday, and you'll be hearing some things throughout the service where we say thank you and honor him and celebrate his life and ministry. We're so grateful for him and Patty and for all that God has done in them and through them for us. And so we're gonna be doing that together this morning. As we start this service, I asked Mark if there was a statement or a question that he thought would be good for us to reflect on, something that was meaningful to him for his life. And so in a few moments, you're going to see a statement come on the screen. There's going to be some music. And I encourage you to reflect upon the truth of those words and to think about what it means for you as we prepare our hearts and enter into worship together this morning.
Good morning, I'm Pastor Sharon. I invite you to continue in worship as we pray together. Let's pray. Holy God, you did see us with love before we were born and you breathed your very life into us. We could not call ourselves your children apart from this lavish love which pursued us and made a way for us. Undeserved, unearned, yet you look on us with loving kindness. This is amazing grace, God, and we thank you. We worship you today. Lord, today we also thank you for the gifts of grace that have been shared with us through Pastor Mark's leadership these past eight years. We see your sovereign hand in the way you brought he and Patty to our congregation and to this community. Our hearts are full as we recall their love and their commitment to be present with us as leaders and friends. Thank you, God, for the blessing of their ministry among us. In this time of transition and with the added uncertainty of this pandemic existence, oh God, we need your grace even more. We remember that your faithfulness, who you are, is never limited by change, by disease, by economic uncertainty, even by death. And so we bring, pray that you would bring hope, you would bring healing to all those who are sick and those who grieve. Encourage the lonely, Lord. Be with the depressed and comfort each of them with your presence. And Lord, we would dare to ask that you fill us with the joy of Jesus Christ so that even in our weaknesses, our lives would overflow in blessing to others. May we be ready to give ourselves to others with that same reckless love we have received from you. We pray this in confident faith in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Good morning, I'm Mark. I'm one of the pastors on the team. As we gather today for the last time where there's two Marks on our pastoral team. Pastor Mark, today we celebrate you and want to send you and Patty off into this next season of life. So despite whatever is going on, we believe that we've been called to love God passionately, to love others deeply, and to bless the world radically. And to be honest, as a church, we're not in any rush to get back to church as we knew it, because if there's anything we've learned during this COVID season, is that church is going to look different moving forward. And so because we're still in phase two in, st in the state of Washington, we are continuing to refrain as a church from any in-person gatherings. But I want to encourage you because we've already begun to dream up a plan of what discipleship will look like and what worship will look like in different avenues as we move forward as a church. So stay tuned for what God will continue to do through our church. In addition, usually we have sports camp hosted here on campus throughout the summer, but this year it's coming right to your backyard. August 10th through 14th, you are invited to host sports club in your backyard. It's one hour each day for five days of high energy and scripture focused time for our Kairos kids. But it's also a great opportunity to be missional in your community. So for more information, go to plcc.org slash sports club. And finally, our plans to celebrate Pastor Mark and Patty have shifted a little bit. And so uh, beginning tomorrow, there is an opportunity for you to sign up to drive by the Meredith's house to have some uh, really one-on-one -on -one time with Pastor Mark and Patty to say your farewells. And so to sign up for one of those times throughout this coming week, simply go to plcc.org slash farewell. And in addition, we are gonna be streaming a farewell celebration next Saturday, August 1st at 4 p.m. on Facebook Live. So stay tuned for all of those details well to send Pastor Mark and Patty off into this next season of life. Hi, Pastor Mark, it's Evan Moore here. And on behalf of all the students of Pine Lake Covenant Church, I would like to 
Thank you for being an awesome pastor these last few years, especially during this hard time. We will miss you and all your guidance. Hi, Pastor Mark. I'm Anna Callahan. I'm going to be a freshman at Skyline High School. Um, we're On behalf of all the students, we're really going to miss you, and we are so lucky to have you as a pastor. And you've just been such a great pastor and influence on all of us. So thank you. We'll miss you. Good morning, I'm Pastor Nancy, and it's time for our Kairos Kids Moment. Preschoolers, elementary students, even little ones, come a little closer to the screen and make sure you have your rock wall, your memento container. We add rocks or mementos when we use our Bibles, when we see and hear God's word, when we share the remember verse and hide it in our noggin, and when we see God sightings, when we see God at work around us and we call it out. So kids, go ahead and open up your containers, get your mementos ready, and let's add those together. I'm going to add some mementos today as we celebrate Pastor Mark and Miss Patty. Miss Patty, we are so grateful for the ways that you have served in Kairos Kids, leading small groups and sharing the big God story over the years. You have been a God sighting to us. And Pastor Mark, we're so grateful for the ways that you have championed intergenerational ministry, allowing the big God story to be shared and grow our church. Thank you for the ways that you have faithfully served. We also share in a remember verse and Pastor Mark picked this one out. So let's say this together out loud. But seek first his kingdom and his righteousness and all these things will be given to you as well. Matthew six thirty three.
you for the generous support you give to the mission of God through Pine Lake Covenant Church. Because you give, we are able to encourage families to the Backyard Sports Club. Because you give, we're able to continue offering generous support to our mission partners here in this community and around the world. Thank you for your generosity. A reminder, there are several ways you can give. You can give online at plcc.org slash give or text any amount to this number, 725-444-9494. As you make decisions about your giving, I invite you to pray this prayer of commitment with me. Let's pray together. God, we offer these gifts as an act of worship, for all we have is yours. Amen. Mark's pastoral ministry has been a gift to so many people, one that you can't adequately capture in words or in pictures. But this following tribute, this video collection, is one way to capture some of the moments of 25 years of faithful ministry. Hi, Pine Lake Covenant Church. This is Greg Yee, uh, Superintendent of the Pacific Northwest Conference. And I uh, just want to honor your pastor today, here being his last Sunday as he transitions into retirement. Mark, deeply appreciative of you. And I want to read a letter that you're going to be receiving, but I want to take this opportunity to read it in front of the whole church. So please receive this. It reads, Dearest Mark, on behalf of the conference executive board and staff team, I want to express my deep appreciation for your faithful and fruitful service among us. 
in addition to ministries in Olympia and Eagle River, Alaska. For eight years, Pine Lake Covenant Church has been blessed by your leadership, preaching, teaching, and shepherding. Disciples were made. The good news of Jesus Christ was proclaimed and embodied in your community and around the world. Lives have been changed for eternity. Your neighbors have encountered the hospitality and presence of Christ. We are deeply, we are also deeply grateful for your ministry in the conference and in our church planting efforts. You have been a wonderful team member. As you step into official retirement, we honor you, Pastor. There's an exclamation mark there. We bless you as you transition into this new phase of life and ministry. We're thrilled that the Pacific Northwest Conference will still be your home and that you will still be among us. May God give you wisdom, health, and strength for the path ahead. May he give you good companions and pour out his grace for this new chapter. And may he continue to fan into flame within you for the work of the gospel in this new stage. Mark, thank you for your companionship, your partnership, and impactful service in the local church and in the conference. We bless you, brother, being confident of this, that he who began a good work in you will carry it on to completion until the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. Philippians 1, 6. We love with love and gratitude, Greg Yee, Superintendent. We bless you, Mark. We thank you so much for your ministry here and throughout the denomination. God bless you in your retirement. Well, hello, Pine Lake Covenant Church and friends and family and people watching from all around. Um, this is Steve Scheibe here in my home studio here on Offutt Lake, uh, just south of Olympia. I wore a collar for the occasion, but please pardon my hat. I'm going to be COVID casual today because uh, with no haircuts for the past, I don't know how many months, my hair is ridiculously huge. So the cap is the lesser evil. So we'll just keep that on. So congratulations, Mark and Patty Meredith, as we celebrate your retirement today. This is amazing. I want to thank you for investing so much in my life. And I am just one of many people who are so grateful for you. So I don't know if you remember Mark, but I was a junior in high school when I first started attending Grace Community Covenant Church in Olympia. And you and I think Greg Creighton were teaching Sunday school to the youth group. And so on the very first day I met you, you were investing in my life. So we connected some more over the years, uh, college years. I went to Africa, you went to Regent and you went to River Ridge. But we really connected when you and Paul Wilson recruited me to come up to lead worship and come alongside God's work in a church plant in Alaska, in Eagle River. And that Alaska season was amazing. My growth curve, my learning curve was really steep. And, um, but it was an adventure time and a time of making lifelong friends. So um, what else? During that season, you encouraged me to go to Regent to the Unseminary, Theology Through the Arts, who are always investing in me, encouraging me in the arts. In fact, this, um, this painting is from Alaska. It's from your home. And I, that brings me to the most profound investment. Um, this was the view from the Skyline House, but also the Danaka House. I lived with you in Alaska. You invited me into your home and you welcomed me into your family. So thank you, Mark and Patty and Aaron and Jesse and Sam for welcoming me into your home and showing me the hospitality, but also the family love. And we went to Europe as a family and all kinds of things, adventures. So um, I just want you to know, thank you for investing in my life. And I'm, I'm a rich man to, to have journeyed with you. And we're gonna journey more, I hope. And uh, just know that I love you and I appreciate you and I thank God for you. All right, so here's the song, Give Me Jesus. Mark, you selected this song, and this song is just light, like a whisper. And it's short. If you blink, you'll miss it. But it's loaded. And it's so true because all of the adventures and all the wonders of this world, the pleasures and treasures, are really empty without Jesus. So um, here's Give Me Jesus. I invite you all, as you're listening and watching um, in your homes, wherever you are today, 
to maybe, if you want to, just close your eyes and maybe make this song your own prayer and your own declaration. <clears throat> so here's Give Me Jesus. <clears throat> you guys. Good morning. I'm Patty Meredith. Today's scripture reading is from 1 Corinthians chapter 1 verse 26 through chapter 2 verse 5. Brothers and sisters, think of what you were when you were called. Not many of you were wise by human standards. Not many were influential. Not many were of noble birth. But God chose the foolish things of the world to shame the wise. God chose the weak things of the world to shame the strong. God chose the lowly things of this world and the despised things and the things that are not to nullify the things that are so that no one may boast before him. It is because of him that you are in Christ Jesus who has become for us 
wisdom from God. That is our righteousness, holiness, and redemption. Therefore, as it is written, let the one who boasts, boast in the Lord. And so it was with me, brothers and sisters. When I came to you, I did not come with eloquence or human wisdom, as I proclaimed to you the testimony from God. For I resolved to know nothing while I was with you except Jesus Christ and him crucified. I came to you in weakness with great fear and trembling. My message and my preaching were not with wise and persuasive words, but with a demonstration of the Spirit's power, so that your faith might not rest on human wisdom, but on God's power. Hey, good morning, everybody. Uh, I am in the sanctuary, Pine Lake Covenant Church, and I have some friends here who are part of our staff and our leadership team, and they're going to um, be involved a bit today as well. It's a great place to be, and it's been a while since I've been in here. But I wanted to reflect back on, uh, oh, by the way, they're all wearing masks out there, and they've given me freedom not to, just so you know. Uh, and they're supposed, they're, they've been told to laugh loudly at my jokes, and I haven't had many jokes lately as I've been preaching into a camera alone. But um, I wanted to say this isn't how I had pictured this time, and as human beings, we're, we make the best of, of um, what's in front of us, and so I think we're all doing that right now. But I wanted to reflect back on the first Sunday that I, I preached here. It was eight years ago, roughly, and uh, I said something, I was kind of going on a hunch inside of me, that this, and it would be the east side in general, but maybe some Amish in particular, uh, because of the high expectation and uh, high performance culture that we find ourselves in, this place is just prime for the gospel of Jesus Christ. And in those eight years, as I've, uh, you know, we've seen teen suicides and we've seen depression and the struggles that come with the demand upon not just teens, but all of us to uh, form our identities in, in this social media world and the anxiety that comes from that instead of receiving our identity from Christ. Uh, the, the stress of all of this, I believe more than ever, and I really mean this, more than ever that this world, this community needs the gospel of Jesus Christ. And when I say that, I don't mean simply although I mean this, but not simply this, that people need to come to Christ and meet him. I mean something more than that. We need the gospel, that reminder that we're in continual need and desperation for the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ. It's not something we receive once. It's ongoing. And I'm saying that after 40 plus years of walking with Christ, I think I have a greater sense of desperation for his grace today than I ever have in my life. And I, I assume that's just going to keep growing as I learn more about him and as I learn more about myself. Uh, when I, this is a conversation I, I've had with uh, people over the years, and they'll come to me with a particular problem. And it could be the presenting problem could be uh, a marriage or a relationship or a job thing or whatever. And I give them a menu of choices because I feel like, Okay, I'm not going to force anything on you. I don't know why you came to me today, but let me tell you what we can do. We can, we can work on that problem and try to use God's wisdom uh, from Proverbs, say, or, or uh, through life observation to try to fix that problem. Or we can go down into the deep layers of who you are as a person and come to Jesus and see that he is the, the real answer that you need. And if we do that, there's a good chance you won't be back here in a year or, or however long. But know this, that you don't just come to Jesus once. You come to Jesus daily and out of need for him and what he can provide for you. So that is the place I'm coming from today. I feel like that's the message I want to share. And the thing that, um, the way I want to say it, I, I love this phrase and I grabbed onto it. I'm going to do my imperfect best to communicate the truth and the love of Jesus Christ. 
that's the best I can do. And, and I've been called as a pastor for the last 25 years of, on most Sundays, standing before people and trying to take the, that truth that was delivered, in this case, to the Corinthian church in the sixth decade of the first century and bridge that to the 21st century to where we find ourselves in a whole different culture. And what is the eternal word of God to us? So that's my task. It's not easy. And I rest in the words of Dallas Willard that people will forget about 95% of what you say, and they will remember 100% of who you are. And who I am is somebody who is desperate for Jesus Christ. So remember that. Okay, our, our outline, we're going to look first at the weak and foolish us that Paul brings up here. And then we're going to look at the weak and foolish God that Paul is very clear on. And then we're going to look at the uh, power and love of God. All right. So if I can read for you from this passage again. And Paul begins in verse 26. Brothers and sisters, think of what you were when you were called. Not many of you were wise by human standards. Not many of you were influential. Not many of you were of noble birth. But God chose the foolish things of the world to shame the wise. God chose the weak things of the world to shame the strong. That's not an insult, by the way. Um, it, we, we, in saying that we're weak and foolish, we join a whole history of men and women in the Old Testament who qualified some of the, the they all were weak and foolish, including Abraham, Moses, David, and others. So um, we're in a, in a good line there. And also with Peter, that bumbling betrayer, Peter. And we might think of Paul, who wrote this letter, who was, yeah, he was very smart, but he was also somebody who was known as a murderer of Christians earlier in his life. And you know, we're all in a, a place of, of weakness and foolishness in some way in our lives. The point being that this is coming into God's kingdom, it is not based on, it's not a meritocracy. It is, it is not based on our performance. And so Paul wants to get it out there that the weak and the foolish are the ones primarily who are called. Not many of you were influential, or I'm sorry, wise, influential, or of noble birth. And I'm going to ask a question of, of you, but wouldn't you want to be wise, influential, and of a noble birth? And I, th I think we would. But the problem with that is that it creates, as we know on this, in this part of the world, it creates a, a success orientation, the pressure that comes with that, the high expectations. And if, here's the thing, it's almost a no-win situation, but except for what, I'm, what Paul is getting at. But if you fail in being wise, influential, and noble birth, if you fail in being successful, you will feel awful about yourself. And then maybe the gospel will sound like good news to you. But here's the problem. If you succeed in those things, then you will become proud and boastful. And there is nothing, the word boast or boastful in Paul's letter to the Corinthians, it's by far the place where he, they, were, they had a big problem in Corinth with boasting with pride. And Paul, again and again, uh, reminds them of that. And here's what boasting does. It will separate you from God, and it will separate you from people. Every human case, or, or every case of boasting in the history of the world has done one or both of those things. Boasting separates us. And uh, Paul is not, well, he, in fact, he says here, who can boast before God? Who's going to stand before God and boast? It's a joke. Who would ever think of doing that? We are weak and foolish. There was a time in my life which lasted about two years, roughly, before I became, before I came into Christ, before I had a glimpse of what this gospel was all about, where people would ask, and I remember this question, are you a Christian? And I would say something like, well, I'm trying. And when somebody says, well, I'm trying, it's an indicator that they don't get it. They don't understand what a Christian is. And that, as Paul says here in verse 29, 
Don't boast. In verse 30, he says, it is because of Christ, that, or because of him that you are in Christ, who has become for us uh, the wisdom from God. That is our righteousness, our holiness, and our redemption. You can't try. <laughs> the gift is for us. We want to buy it, but the gift is a gift. God gives us a gift that we want to buy. My little sister, who I would hope would, might be listening, watching, my little sister, when she was in uh, uh, age six-ish, uh, she had to uh, make that, she had to go to school, right? And she didn't want to go to school. She had a lot of anxiety about going to school. And she said to my mom, mom, I don't want to go to first grade because I don't know how to read. What's first grade all about? Isn't it to teach somebody how to read? It's that that keeps us, that, that fear. So not only do we have this, uh, this, these struggles that come with this high performance, high expectation world, but we also live with this great fear of looking needy. And there's a lot of that in our world. There's a lot of that in us. We don't want to look like we're needy. And it keeps us in these bad places. And the gospel of Jesus Christ wants to open up that to us and bring the good news in. This gospel takes the pressure off of us. When I was um, first a Christian, I told my friends and I told them that I had become a Christian. And I remember one friend in particular that uh, when I told him, he laughed at me. And I, I felt that and I, and I decided, well, I agree with you. It is a joke, isn't it? I'm, I, it's laughable that God would choose me. I mean, of all the people, it, it's funny. that I mean, it, God has a sense of humor to choose someone like me. That takes the pressure off. And when I, my best gospel days are when I wake up in the morning, I look in the mirror and say, yes, I am a joke. And I look in the mirror and I say, yes, but I am a miracle. And it's those two things together there's no pressure in being a joke or a miracle. It's all from God, and he gets the last laugh on my life. So that's why we need the gospel. And to be weak and foolish is the venue of the heart that allows us to receive it. What a beautiful gospel it is. Now, what about the weakness and foolishness of God? How can we say that? Well, Paul is really clear here that God from the human perspective, looks weak and foolish. That God came to this place where, uh, I mean, there's no place on earth that looks more weak or more foolish than the cross. I mean, for somebody to want to go there, that would be, at least in the world's view, a place of weakness and foolishness. And yet Paul says, there is, I resolve this one thing to preach Christ and him crucified. That's the message that Paul came with to Corinth, and he talks about his own weakness out of which that message came. Paul is so glad to be weak, and what he's saying is that the weakness and foolishness of God are, are exposed here. Now here, look at this. If the cross, which I guess there's one behind me here, if the vertical beam of the cross is, is the one that is from God, the theological beam, and the horizontal beam is the anthropological beam, that's us, and then you have this, this intersection where the God-man hangs and the God-man looks foolish and weak, both from a human standpoint and from God. God becomes weak and foolish so that he can meet us in our foolishness and weakness. And that's not the final word, but that's what we find in the gospel on the cross of Jesus Christ. Now, uh, the, the best, and let's talk about wisdom for a minute, human wisdom, and then we're going to talk about, we'll mention power as well. So those are the two words that Paul is playing with, human wisdom. About uh, the best and the brightest in our culture, I want to use our culture here. About 100 years ago, yeah, about uh, around in this same time, 100 years ago, the best and brightest, the most progressive thinkers in the highest places bought into something 
and, and I'll, the, the actual, the Greek word is, we find it in this text, but the, the word for noble birth is, uh, is, is it, the Greek word is eugesis, 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 yeah. And it, we get the word eugenics from it. Good birth. And the wisest and brightest in our culture became part of the modern eugenics movement. And what that movement was about was racial purity for the white race. Now, the, folks, these are, these, are, these, are the, these are the liberal progressives of the day that are, that are into this. And they believe that through birth control and some through abortion and uh, euthanasia that we can keep the white race pure. Now, how could that be? And you look around today, and of course, anybody who's on that liberal progressive side today would, would not be there, but they were then. And culture goes like this throughout history. And it, we, it's, always, it's untethered to anything uh, absolute most of the time. And so they fell into this trap that ultimately came to full fruition in the practices of the Nazis and Adolf Hitler. So uh, the wisest are, in this world are not always the wisest. You can get all A's and flunk life. It's one of my favorite sayings. You've probably heard me say it many times. The cross is one of the things that it, it brings equality. It levels the ground. Our culture today is crying out for equality with people. And there is nothing like the cross. The ground is level at the foot of the cross, as the old saying goes. There is no one that can look down on another person or another race or another category or another label at the cross. And we all do it. In our weakness and our foolishness, we all do it. Our judgmentalism and our grudges and all of those things are in that category. And when you, how do you know you've come to the cross? Well, you let go of all those things. You, you can't hold them there. As you look at Jesus and what he's doing for you, what he's done for you, the gift of who he is to you, you can no longer hold those opinions of other people. This is why we have to continually go to the cross. I was with a, a pastor friend recently who's a, a person of color, and I asked, we were talking about this, and racism is obviously a topic for the church today. How does the church deal with that topic? How do we address racism? And his main thing for me to hear, as we talked about this, was Mark, preach the cross. Because at the cross, if people get it, they would never be a racist. They will leave their racism behind. Preach the cross. That's what Paul is saying here. All right, power. We're in an election year, and I have great concerns about what the church is going to do during this time. And that is the, uh, uh, this concern for power. And just think about it. The will to power. The, the highest expert on the will to power is Friedrich Nietzsche, who was a famous atheist who had all kinds of things to say, a philosopher. Or Charles Darwin, about the survival of the fittest and the struggle of people and classes and how that works out in evolution. And to see Christians with the will to power, will to political power, that is not the cross. That is the anti-cross. Go to the cross of Jesus and you will not look down on your political enemies. You will see that they too are flawed, but you will see their flaws are no greater than your flaws, and that the forgiveness of God is for all of us. This is the cross of Jesus. It levels the ground. Okay, so um, we have our foolishness and our weakness, and God meets us in our foolishness and weakness, but that's not the end. He meets us with his power and with his love. Now, just think about the power of God, that it's evidenced, uh, it's evidenced in that he chose to deliberately, he deliberately chose to come into a place of weakness and powerlessness and foolishness. That was his choice. 
he, it takes a really, really strong person to lower yourself into a place like that, to deliberately choose to do that. So we see the power of God there. But we, all, we see the love of God when we ask the question, who killed Jesus? And the Bible would say, and we would say too, well, the Jews killed Jesus. We would also say the Romans killed Jesus. The, the crucifixion was a Roman way of uh, killing people. And the Romans were the one, I mean, Pilate, he was part of that. And then theologically, we'd, we could say that we all killed Jesus because of our sin. Our sin put him on the cross. But I think the best answer, ultimately the best answer, is love killed Jesus. He chose to go there. He, took, he used his power to come into that place of weakness to show us how much he loved us. For God so loved the world that he gave his only son. And yeah, so we might not perish, but have eternal life. The love of God. So I want to just share, I want to close by sharing a little bit about uh, some, my story. When I was three years old, I had a moment of terror uh, a seed of terror was planted in my heart. At bedtime, when my dad explained to me, I asked him a question about death, and he explained to me, and that these were his words, I don't remember everything else he said, but he said, everyone dies. And he's being a dad, he's trying to help his son understand truth about this world, and he didn't have uh, maybe the right words to explain the rest of the story about that's not the end, but that's what he told me. Everyone dies. And I remember the images that I was going to sleep that night. I can still see them in my mind of this dark tunnel, darkness that went on forever. And I so much didn't want what my dad told me to be true. And I, I, I can, huge imprint on the, my heart that I remember. And then when I... It, you know, not to tell the whole story, but at age 24, I saw the place of death. I saw the place of death as the cross. I saw the cross. Through my weakness, I was able to see the cross, the place of death, as the place of power and the place of love. And it changed everything for me. And I am still... I'm still weak and I'm, I'm still a joke to think that me, you know, what am, who am I? <laughs> and I'm still a miracle and I'm still desperate for God every day. I'm desperate. I was desperate this morning when I wake up for God and I will be tomorrow. I want to ask if you would join me, and I'm going to ask these people in the room to join me in singing. They're going to have to do it with their masks on. There's a few of us here. A song that <clears throat> I think you know. And it, it's good for your soul. It's good for my soul to sing it. So um, let's sing it together. Jesus loves me, this I know. For the Bible tells me so, little ones to him belong. They are weak, but he is strong. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me, the Bible tells me so. Love that song. I am weak, but he is strong. His power and love have been made known in the place of weakness and foolishness for me, for you. Let's pray. Lord, as... Um, we come to this place now. I pray that we can imagine the cross and in our mind's eye see it and really see it, see it with our hearts, see ourselves looking up, Jesus, at you to see your face, to see your eyes, 
to hear your voice, to see beyond the smell, the sights, the sounds of death, to see what is really going on, to see the love that is being poured out. We look to you, Lord. And then to look and to see those who are around us there, people who are different from us, people who wear labels, people we might be tempted to look down on, and to see how all of that just kind of melts away as your spirit does his work in our hearts. And if that doesn't happen, we look again at you, Lord, and we look again at people. Because that's what happens when we really see the cross. You reconcile us to yourself. You reconcile us to each other. And we thank you, Lord, for that love that is there for us to experience each and every day. We're desperate for it. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
This morning, the leadership team and staff are here to pray with Mark and Patty on our last Sunday. And so we're going to corporately pray for them. And I'll start. Leslie will be in the middle and Jenna will finish. So please join us in prayer. Lord, we just thank you for all the time that you've given us with Mark and Patty. We thank you for the, the blessings that they present in our community. We pray that you would bless them with good memories of the time we've had together, of the things that we've been able to experience and learn from them as a community, as well as the things that they've seen and observed and had hopefully enriched their lives by being a member with us. We just thank you for all these things and we just pray that you would be with them as they move forward. Lord, we just thank you so much um, for the words that you brought to Pastor Mark today that we were able to hear. And God, we pray for Pastor Mark and Patty as they move into this next phase. God, that you would just inspire and continue to grow their love for you and their need for you, Lord. That you would bring people into their lives that would need to hear what it is that they have to share, Lord, that you would continue to allow them to bless other people with their faith journey, Lord. We pray that you would help us all to continue to lean into you, Lord, and remember that we are all the same at the foot of the cross. Dear Lord, as we come together today to remember and celebrate all that Pastor Mark and Patty have meant to us, um, we just thank you for their faithfulness to the call that you have placed on their lives and we pray a special blessing this morning um, as they move forward and transition onto what you have planned for them next, God. And I just pray for peace and wisdom as they, discerned, uh, as they discern what you have planned for them next, God. And um, we just lift them up to you in your perfect power and love. And we wish them just so many blessings in the future. We pray this all in your name, Lord. Amen. 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 So, um, it's hard to say whatever the last words are on a Sunday, but uh, I'm just going to make it really, really short. I hope, first of all, to be able to say goodbye to everybody, if, if possible, somehow personally. I know Patty would say the same thing. And so that's just the first thing. If you could, um, anything we can do to, to make that would happen, happen would be good for, on our end. But, but uh, you know, every... Sunday, pretty much I say these words, may the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. And as I say those words today, I want you to think of everything that Paul is trying to say here to the Corinthians, the grace of the Lord and how he came into this world to distribute that grace among people he loved and how it's found you and how we're so desperate for it. And so hear these words, may the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ be with you as you go forth through this life. In his name we pray, amen. Thanks so much for joining us for worship today. I invite you to stick around for Encore Online. The last time that the Merediths will be with us during Encore. So even if you can just stick around for a few minutes, I invite you to follow the QR code right after this or simply go to plcc.org slash Encore. We'll see you there.